This uh, site, Inverness Cannery, we're on the road to where there were once four canneries. The Skeena River Slough, it's called, because there's a large island, Smith Island, in the middle of the Skeena River. So this is the backwater. And in this area, the four canneries were located. This one, Inverness, has been long gone. It's been gone for more than 45 years. But I went to grade seven here in a one-room school. My brother and I and two others uh, were the only kids who were not uh, of First Nations heritage or of uh, Japanese heritage. At that time, some were coming back, but not very many. That's though they had been taken to uh, to the internment camps in 1942. Um, this cannery was the oldest on the river. J. H. Todd and Son. It was started in the middle or the third part of the 19th century by Scottish immigrants to take advantage of the Skeena salmon in competition with the Fraser salmon. So this piece of, of property we're going to travel now was all dedicated to salmon at one time. And the only access was not this highway, but the railroad and it had come in in 1910 to Prince Rupert, the Grand Trunk Pacific. So if we wanted to go to Prince Rupert, we had to go either by boat or by train and, uh, or walk, <laughs> and that was quite a long walk. So uh, I was at the age in, in this particular one where I was worried about the next phase of my life because I would have to go to junior high school in Prince Rupert, and I was terrified at the thought not unlike any other person who would have to go to the big city after living in the one-room school grades, one to six, one teacher. So I think about that when I think about Inverness. And uh, there was a nice little house further down the road. And my brother and I used to stop there on our walking back from school uh, sometimes. And the man there made me a beautiful box covered in shells a jewel box, and I still have pieces of it, the, the lid, I have the lid even to this day, and that's more than 70 years ago. So mm. it's quite, that's what I think of here. Mm. In some cases, there are people that I will remember because of the location. Uh, when we get to North Pacific, that's where we actually lived. So I can tell you about some of the people there. And um, people who changed history um, from here, um, the Bell Irving family that owned North Pacific. General Bell Irving was the general in charge of 15,000 Canadians who marched into Amsterdam on May the 5th, 1945, to release the Dutch people from the Nazis. Uh, he later became Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia, and when I followed him in that place, uh, in that office, it was a, a joyful thing for my mother to see me following Mr. Bell Irving. <laughs> um, and also uh, the Bellarving family is still very prominent in, in British Columbia. Uh, of course, when we get further along, you will see that all these canneries were run on a basically colonial hierarchy. And so there were divisions, heavy divisions of class and gender and race and, and uh, how people were paid and how people were regarded and respected or not respected had much to do with the times we lived in. And uh, there'll be other memories that I'll come up with as we go along. I'll tell you at North Pacific, specific memory.